Hello, and welcome back. I realized during the previous video, I gave a bunch of numbers, explained how to factorize them, but I didn't quite actually say how to factorize 4, 5, 6, 7, which is what I had written in the previous thumbnail. And in retrospect, 4, 5, 6, 7 is actually a bit harder than all the examples that I happen to have generated from random.org. So it hasn't quite fully explain how we factorize something difficult like that. I'm going to do that today in this very short video by explaining in a bit more detail um, the concept of Fermat factorization. Now, during the previous video, I talked about using identities to try to factorize some numbers. And one of the identities that I emphasized is the difference of squares. I said that if you have a number, like let's say 1961, and you try to write it as a factorization of an odd number times an odd number, then it should be actually possible to write the two odd numbers as a sum and a difference of two integers, i.e. it should be a difference of two squares. And therefore, if you wanted to find two close numbers, it should imply that b is small if the two factors are close and therefore both quite big. Thankfully, uh, if we wanted to test this out, this should be true, but more importantly, this should be true. So you can try to let a be a square number that is slightly more than 1961. And if we tested it out, a equals to 45. 45 squared minus 1961 is actually 64, which is 8 squared. And so that would imply that 1961 is 45 plus 8 times 45 minus 8. So that would be the factorization of 1961. But we can actually also use the same idea if we want to factorize other numbers or if we want to show that a number cannot be factorized. And that would be what we can do for 4, 5, 6, 7. So in the same vein, if it can be factorized into odd times odd, 4, 5, 6, 7 should be equal to some a squared minus b squared, which means that a squared minus 4, 5, 6, 7 should be a square. Now, the simplest way to apply this Fermat factorization to rule out some possibilities is simply to test the next few. So let's say that you have found the nearby square, which is 68 squared, then a squared minus 4, 5, 6, 7 would be equals to 7, which is not a square. If we use a69 squared, which is 4761, subtract 4567, you get 194, which is not a square. If let's say we do one more, a70 squared, which is 4900, then a squared minus 4567 is 333, which is also not a square. Now, during the previous video, I kind of said that this would give you some supporting evidence that, okay, it may not be possible to factorize it into two big prime numbers, which is our biggest concern and also the hardest case to spot. But what exactly is the restriction that we have concluded from something like this? Now, if let's say I stop at a equals to 70, now, the implication of stopping at a equals to 70 is that if there's any solution, a should be more than 70. And if a is more than 70, b would be more than the square root of 333. So b would be at least equal to 19 in this case, and a is at least 71. Now this would imply that in your factorization of a plus b times a minus b, 
a plus b is at least 90 which means that a minus b is less than or equal to 4567 over 90 which means that it is at most 50. Now the implication of this is that the smaller factor should be less than 50. And so if a prime factor exists, it should be less than 50. And in effect, what this means is that we have ruled out all these prime numbers 53, 59, 61, and 67 have been excluded from here without us actually doing division. Now you may say that that isn't really a lot of time savings because well we have just done this bunch of squares and we have only just ruled out four possibilities right so this seems a little bit slow and indeed that is true. But in practice, because we know that it is quite easy to compute the difference of two squares, we can proceed onwards just by addition, even if you do not remember square numbers or if the square numbers are too big that uh, you don't want to calculate them explicitly, just a bit of addition. And also the addition is just applied down here, 137, 139 and so on. The difference between consecutive squares is odd numbers. At the same time, we are actually able to make big jumps through our square numbers, which is the other thing. Now, let's look at a squared minus 4567 a little bit more closely and now think about it in an even more high powered sense. I want to rule out quite a number of possibilities. So the first thing that I can say is that if I consider this mod 4, this would actually be a squared plus 1 modulo 4. And we know that squares can only be 0 or 1 mod 4. So the only way that this can be a square is if a is even and a squared is 0 mod 4. In other words, you only need to test even values. Now, another simple one that we can use is the last digit. So now that it is even, we can look at the last digit of A, and the last digit of A, you have got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, a squared would look like 0, 4, 6, 6, and 4. And so the A squared minus 4, 5, 6, 7 would give you 3, 7, uh, 9, 9, and 7. Now once again, if we're looking at the last digit of a square, 3 and 7 both don't work. So the only candidates would be 4 and 6, which means that you only need to jump all the way up to check 74 and 76 and then all the way up to 84 and you would have ruled out quite a lot. So let's say we did that. A is 74. This is 909. 909 is not the square. If we went up, this would have increased by 300 to 1209. And 1209 is not a square because this is divisible by 3 but not 9. And then you can jump up all the way to 84 already. So this would be 7056 minus 4567 is 2489, which is a bit less than 2500, so that cannot work. 
And if we just do one more, let's say, which is 86. Um, this once again is not a square, although um, arguably it is a little bit harder to check by this point in time. Now, but let's say we have done this calculation. It means that A is going to be at least 94. That's a very, very big improvement. B is also going to be very big. Because if we just do a rough estimate that 94 squared is going to be close to 9,000, it's going to be very large. B squared is going to be more than 4,000, just very roughly. And so your A plus B is going to be, at a very rough estimate, um, more than 150. Which means that the smaller factor now has kind of dropped all the way to at most 30. And so if you consider this bit of modular arithmetic, you will only need to check the small prime factors again. Now, at the end of all of this, you may be asking a very um, you know, simple question, which is, are you sure we are supposed to do that much work in order to test that 4, 5, 6, 7 is prime? And the answer to that is twofold. First of all, it is very unlikely that in a single question, they will expect you to factorize more than one thing. It is very unlikely. So if a problem really asks you to factorize a lot of four-digit numbers which are not special, that's just a terrible problem. There is really no point bothering about such a question and uh, hopefully no one will set such a question. But the second thing which is very important is just that there is no simple factorization algorithm. And when we say there is no simple factoring algorithm, this is actually the basis of many cryptographic systems. The most famous of which is the RSA crypto system. And you can just search this out. RSA is named after three mathematicians whose names I don't quite remember at this point in time. In other words, we cannot hope for a universal solution. And this is the same as the fact that there is no universal solution to Diophantine equations. Of which factoring is basically one sort. So it is not shocking that we do not have a very simple way to do this. But I thought this is a nice way to introduce in this notion which is that a very thorough understanding of complicated round two concepts can actually help you with something as trivial and as simple as factoring a four digit number that's what i have to say here feel free to ignore all of this but i think it's interesting enough to mention for a little bit thanks for watching and see you again next time for a more um, practical and new set of tips for the SMO.